Hey everybody, Marcus here. Um, we're gonna discuss the uh, the newly released uh, MWX GT Pro Conversion Kit. Um, everyone who pre-ordered, they are going out tomorrow. They are boxed up and uh, you should get um, tracking numbers um, tonight. Okay, uh, a couple things. Um, Chassis, um, got a couple different options available. We've got your raw, got your red, and we got your flat black. I'm kind of like a flat black. I just, 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 just did those today. I like it a lot, actually. Um, each chassis will come with a floating pod mount. Um, I eliminated the little notch in the back. It was annoying. And, um, yeah, it's gone. So each chassis will come with the uh, FPM. And I've also updated the FPMs a little bit. I made them so you can unmistakably, unmistakably get them on correct. And I've tightened them up a little bit with the tolerance. So if you screw the screws down all the way, they will it will be tight. So you, you, you will need to back the screws off probably, you know, a quarter to half a turn. Uh, and that's done because if it wears out down the line, you can always tighten it up and keep your keep your play. Um, just one of those things. Okay, I guess probably the other than the chassis, the biggest thing that I've uh, come up with with this car is the uh, the caster block. And um, we have here we have our caster block. Couple of things, as you can tell in this picture, it's not clearance out in the middle. That's for strength, which means if you run a plastic lower GT front, you're going to have to take a Dremel tool and, and clear out the center where the sway bar um, holder was uh, in order for this to fit. You'll see it when you get this. Uh, make sure you give yourself enough clearance so this sits all the way down on the post. Uh, if you run aluminum front end uh, lower, then it's fine. It bolts right on. Um, when I first originally designed it, I did put a hole here for the um the chassis brace but obviously if you start sliding it back and forth the chassis brace isn't going to work um i don't use chassis brace i haven't built a car with a chassis brace in probably a year i don't really think it's necessary chassis is not going to bend you're good to go uh so once again i would not use a chassis brace if you're going to use the caster block because if you have this slid back and you try to screw the chassis brace into it it's going gonna, it's gonna to tweak something so just uh just don't do it. Um, another feature that I've got in here that I really have been kind of quiet about is that uh, anyone who's run 12 scale have knows what uh, dynamic caster is. And so what that basically is, is the arms, the upper arms, instead of being flat, what I've done is I've angled them back. What that does is that the more suspension, the more suspension throw you get, the more caster you get at the same time. So um, I guess probably the easy way to explain it is if you have, and these numbers aren't really accurate, I'm just, just making it simple. Uh, if you have two degrees of static caster and then your car goes into a turn and once it plants full plant, say mid corner, you'll probably get another degree of caster, which does what? It gives you more steering on exit. So it's very easy for this for you to get this car to have uh, good entry steering along with mid and exit steering um, because of the dynamic caster. Um, also, you'll on this particular car, this is my test car I'm going to show you right now on here, the caster block is all the way forward. And if you can look at that, um, I calculated that to be about one and a half to two degrees um, all the way forward. Um, I think general rule is the more forward you have it, the more turn in the car is going to have, uh, and you would kind of technically lose, uh, steering mid and exit, but with a dynamic caster, you kind of get the best of both worlds. Um, there's only about a half a millimeter of play between, um, full forward and full backward. So by all means, try on your car, try on your track. I mean, if you have a tight track, you're for sure going to want to run all the way forward. If you have a long flowing track, you might, may be able to slide it back a little bit to get a little uh, better performance. Um, I just did a video on the shock relocate kit, so uh, I won't go into it too much, but 
Um, we do, I have changed the location uh, for the shock on the shock relocation kit uh, compared to the version one. And the thing about that is moving the shock forward more get, makes a car more agile, I guess I can say. I don't wanna say aggressive because it's not that it's aggressive, but it, it response, how about that? It's got better response. Now, personally, I'm, I'm, I don't like having a, lot, a really responsive car on throttle, that makes sense. So if this is the case for you and you put the relocate in your car and it feels too jittery for you, simply raise the front of the shock up and or go thicker center grease. Like I usually run 15K, go 30K and try that out. And it's, you should be able to find a happy medium in there. All right, next up, um, the Julia... The Julia front shocks. These things are money. They're um, full aluminum. Um, very well built. Very good close tolerance. Um, I I can't tell you. I can't stress hard enough that you need to have these shocks on your GT. Uh, during testing, we didn't. I think in a twenty in a two day period, we greased them once, like in the morning on on Saturday. And once again, on Sunday morning, and the car actually got faster throughout the day. So, and I've said this before, if you had a, a, an old GT, uh, an old GT before, that was the worst problem with that car is the shocks were just not consistent and you had to chase it all the time. These, not so much. Um, okay, so setup wise, um, we fiddled around with everything, went extreme on everything, trying to find a good balance. And, you know, to be honest with you, we both like the yellow fronts, 15K, shocks laid all the way down, about 0.5 to 0.8 millimeter droop, depending on how your driving style is and grip and tires, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we both ran the castle block all the way forward in the back. We, uh, I ended up using the purples on the sides. I think, um, I think Alex liked the yellows. Um, you know, that's one of those driver's style things. But the thing about the car, it really, it's really planted in the rear. Like it doesn't, you can drive through just about anything on it. it the, the back end is just settled. Um, really, really good. That's one of the things, that's one of the things that uh, we like so much about it. Um, very easy to drive, very fast. Uh, it's got a really, really good mid and exit corner corner speed. I mean, it rolls through the corner. It's one of those cars where you don't have to drive it hard to go fast. Like usually our fastest lap, we're, both of us were like, did, how did that just happen? <laughs> it was just, we weren't really trying to go for a fast lap. Um, I would say it's probably a little bit off the pipe kind of a car. So um, very, very good car, easy to drive, very fast. Um, I think you guys are gonna love it. Uh, they're shipping out this week. The next batch will be after See, Maryland is this weekend, and then I've got New Hampshire. It, probably about two weeks before I can get the next batch out. It's just I won't be here very much. I'll only be here about three days next week, so I can't get a whole lot done in that time period. But uh, I'm stacking up on parts, and uh, we'll be good to go. Thanks a lot, guys.